all, this is Dr. Shri Goswami. This is uh, the starting lecture of a series of lectures on machine learning, data science, and deep learning. Uh, so today we are going to talk about or understand what is machine learning all about. Okay, so uh, machine learning is uh, consists of two terms, right? Uh, one is machine, and another is learning. So when we talk about machines, so here we are not talking about machines like you know automobiles or any other kind of machines. In context of computer science, uh, a program can be thought to be a machine. And uh, learning can be thought as um, demonstrating some newly acquired skills. Okay, so if you uh, teach a, uh, a kid to ride a bicycle, then it will be demonstrated when the kid can successfully, you know, ride that. Okay, so before I proceed, I would uh, like to talk about a couple of books. So one is called as Introduction to Statistical Learning by Trevor Hestia and T. Shibrani. And another book is called uh, uh, Building Machines Using TensorFlow and uh, Psychic, uh, which is by Aurelia Geron. So these are uh, both very phenomenal books and, uh, you know, many cases I have uh, shamelessly used some of the concepts and graphics used in both these books. Okay, so definitely collect your copy of these books. These are very, very good ones. Okay, so now let us uh, understand machine learning with an example. So, uh, let's say that you are asked to build a spam filter. So, what is a spam filter? If you use Gmail, which I am sure you do, you'll see that some emails are classified as uh, spam, some as uh, social, some as promotions. So, basically, a spam filter takes an email as an input and labels it as a normal email or a spam email. Okay, so spam means that they're trying to, it is, it is mostly for advertising purpose and they're trying to sell certain things to you, promote certain things to you. So a basic approach can be that you think what are the most common words in such emails. So that can be free, that can be discount, uh, that can be offer, that can be holiday and so much and so forth. Okay. So, uh, one basic approach can be list down such, such words and try to find out that uh, which of them are occurring and how many of them are occurring. And then uh, if that is beyond the threshold, you classify them as bad. So that is one of the approaches. Okay. But the flip side is that, you know, coming up with such a long list of words is very difficult. It is hard to maintain and spammers will always try to outsmart you. So they are very smart people always thinking one step ahead of you. Okay. So if we do this traditional approach, then what is the workflow that we will follow? So basically we will study the problem and we will try to come up with these rules. So what these rules signify that how many frees are there, count the number of free words count the occurrence of the word discount. So these are the rules. And then you evaluate. Evaluate means that you check, you already have uh, emails from history and you know whether they are normal or spam and you actually check that using these rules, whether you are able to classify them correctly. Okay. So then you analyze the errors, that how much error is there? Is it more than maybe 30%? If it is more than 30%, we again study the problem that are we missing certain important words? And when we are happy uh, following this iterative process, we launch this into production. So that is a typical workflow without machine learning. Now, when we use machine learning, you will see that there is a new component which has come, which is the data component. And basically, that trains a machine learning algorithm. Okay, so there is no explicit rules now. The data is actually giving the rules. Okay, so this we will further discuss. Now let's look at another such example. 
So let us say that you have been again asked to write a program which takes image of a handwritten uh, digit as an input and it classifies that what digit is it? Is it 0, 1, up to 9? What digit it stands for? Okay. So one of the characteristics of both these problems are that, you know, uh, it, it doesn't have this, uh, doesn't have a very fixed set of if-then-else rules. Okay. So, as example, let's say we try to find out uh, or try to get a rule for zero. So, we can think of uh, a, a, any object which is a, which has a closed loop will be a zero. But you can understand that some cases, uh, if you magnify, maybe the loop is not closed. So what in those cases? So basically in both these two cases, it is very difficult to come up with a fixed set of if then else rules for classification. So these are ideal candidates where you apply machine learning. Okay. So uh, uh, here is one particular example uh, where a machine learning program is contrasted with a traditional program. So traditional program will have data and the program is already there in the computer and you get the output. So a typical example will be that uh, you give uh, the amount that is there in a particular account in a bank and it calculates what is the interest accrued for that particular account. So there is a specific set of if then else rules where you try to find out that what is the type of account whether it is a savings account a current account or a fixed deposit you also calculate the tenure and that way the interest is calculated but the most important thing is that there is a fixed set of rules okay whereas in machine learning programs uh, you give data and output to the computer and it uh, gives the program as the output. So what does that mean? So that means that basically you are giving the emails and their labels. So basically whether it is a spam or not a spam and you get a program which has learned now to classify uh, an email into a spam email or a normal email. Well, all right. Okay. So a more formal definitions now uh, so machine learning is a field of study which gives the computer the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. So that's what we were trying to highlight that they are not explicitly programmed. Okay, so there is no hard-coded if-else rules. And this definition is given by Arthur Samuels which, who is one of the forefathers of artificial intelligence. But there is a very famous anecdote of uh, Arthur Samuels where he is credited to build the first program uh, demonstrate learning and it was for a checkers program which is a board game. You can definitely read it up. Another more formal definition from the, uh, the very popular textbook by Tom Michel is a computer program is said to learn from experience E with respect to some class of task T and performance measure P, if its performance at tasks in T as measured by P improves with experience E. So it's, 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 it's simple. So the thing is that uh, basically there are three components. One is the experience. Okay. One is the task and one of the, another is how good you are at the task. How is your performance? Okay. So let us understand this TPE with two further examples. So if you look at the task of identifying spam emails, the task T is classification of emails. What is the performance measure? The performance measure is percentage of emails correctly classified. And what is the training experience? So this is uh, one place where I have seen my students going wrong that the training experience is that you have database of emails with their label. So there is an email and it is classified as normal, another email, it is classified as spam, another email classified as normal, like this, all right? And similarly, for handwritten recognition learning problem, the task is 
recognizing and classifying handwritten words within images. And the performance measure is percentage of words correctly classified. Training experience is a database of handwritten words with given classification. So the image is there, image of the word is there, and what the word actually signifies, that is also there. So I hope here I could give you some idea about what uh, machine learning stands for. So I really thank you for watching this and uh, we will follow up with certain further lectures. Thank you very much.